it's not very often I get to start a video with an exclamation, big news from the world of microcontrollers. Yes, microcontrollers are cool again. And in this case, it's about the Raspberry Pi Pico 2, the new microcontroller board announced by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And the star of the show is the new chip on that board, the RP2350. And it has a really interesting trick hidden up its sleeve in that it actually has two different types of CPU cores on that one chip. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, it's all about the new chip, the RP2350. That's a new microcontroller chip from the Raspberry Pi. That's what it looks like, the little Raspberry Pi logo. And then you look down here, RP2350, and there are some variations depending on the number of pins it has and so on. So why is the chip called the RP2350? What is that meant to me? Is that meant to mean something to me? Well, if you remember, there's the RP2040. That was the first microcontroller chip released by the Raspberry Pi Foundation and found in the original Raspberry Pi. So let's decode the numbers, RP Raspberry Pi. That's pretty easy. Two, well, the last one was the 2040, that also had a two on it, so it's again a dual core system. And now, the dip with rather than a 2 0, 2040, we've now got the 2350. So the three indicates that it's got a Cortex M33 or a Hazard 3 CPU. And we'll talk more about that in a minute, what all that means. Then the five here is kind of a little mathematic. Uh, operation there and the 5 basically tells you it's got 520k of RAM and the last one there the 0 means that it uses either external flash or that there has 2 megabytes of internal flash if there's a 2354 on there. So we're looking at a dual core Cortex M33 or dual core Hazard 3 CPU with built-in RAM and flash all on a nice little chip. So let's compare the RP2040 with the RP2350. First bump is in the clock speed. We can see here it's now running at up to 150 megahertz and there is probably some significant overclocking ability there as well. The base speed or the default speed was 133 megahertz. We doubled the RAM almost, 264K up to 520K. So excellent, so we're faster, more RAM. And then here we used to have the Cortex M0 and now we've got the Cortex M33. And we'll look at the difference between those two in a minute. But here's the big surprise. We now also have the possibility of running two Hazard 3 CPU cores and they are based on RISC-V. So in fact, the RP2350 has four CPU cores in it, two Cortex M33 cores from ARM, and two uh, RISC-V Hazard 3 CPU cores, and we'll talk more about those uh, in a minute. Because the Cortex-M33 is basically a, uh, a big update uh, in terms of security, and uh, you've got things like trust zone, you also get, when you're using the Cortex-M33 core, some extra stuff like SHA-256 uh, acceleration built into the hardware, there's a true random number generator built into the hardware, and these all come with the Cortex-M33. They're not part of the Hazard 3, but we'll talk more about that again in a second. And the other big update is there are now three PIO blocks. The PIO has been so successful on the uh, 2040. You, I've got videos here on how you can program it here on this channel. People have been able to use it to power you know, VGA screens and all kinds of interesting stuff because you've got this programmable IO. I've got videos about it here on the channel if you want to find out more. They've increased the number of state machines from 8 to 12 by including another PIO block in the new chip. So I said we'll look at the difference in the Cortex M0 Plus and the Cortex M33. So the M0 Plus was released in 2012. The Cortex M33 was released in 2016, so it's a newer chip. But here's the big difference, because you go from the ARM V6M, M meaning microcontroller, to ARM V8M, M meaning microcontroller. So the ARM V8M is still 32-bit. ARM V8A, which is what you get in smartphones and in tablets, is 64-bit. But ARM V8 M remains at 32 bits, but you get extra security stuff like Trust Zone. You get hardware divide 
inside of uh, the Cortex M33, something you didn't get in the Cortex M0. Now, what they did with the RP2040 is they added in some extra circuitry. And when a compiler needed to use hardware divide, it called that special circuitry because it wasn't available in the uh, M0 plus, but it is available in the M33. In fact, the M33 also has DSP instructions and floating point, single provision floating point instructions as well. So it's much more capable in terms of more sophisticated processing. Floating point, hardware divide, DSP, all that stuff is built into the M33. It's got a three-stage pipeline as opposed to a two-stage pipeline. And I'm give a number here uh, about kind of the performance per megahertz. You can see here that it's 0 0.95 for the Cortex M0 Plus, 1.5 for the M33. So already the M33 is going to be faster if it's running at the same megahertz. And here in the RP2350, it's already running at a higher megahertz. So we're going to see a lot of performance differences uh, here with the new chip. So what's all this business about the Hazard 3? Well, the Hazard 3 is a three-stage RISC-V processor implementing the RISC-V 32-bit instruction set with some extensions, including uh, integer, uh, divide, and multiply built into hardware. Now, it's designed by Luke Wren, who is a chip designer at Raspberry Pi. He's been working there for a number of years having graduated from Cambridge University. And it is an open source implementation of the RISC-V 32-bit instruction set for microcontrollers using uh, Verilog. And there is a GitHub repository that you can go to to find that stuff. So what's the difference then between the Hazard 3 and the Cortex-M33? Well, the Hazard 3 has just been announced. Uh, although the GitHub repository has been seeing updates over several years, V1 has just been announced now. As I said, Cortex M33 was announced in uh, 2016. So we've got RISC 5 uh, 32 bit versus ARM V8M 32 bit. Both have hardware dividing them, but the Cortex M33 has DSP and full uh, FPU, both three stage. And the Cortex M33, because you've got uh, things like Trust Zone, you've also got things like this uh, SHA-256 acceleration, you've got the heart, the true hardware uh, random number generator and so on. So from that point of view, the advanced features are much greater in the M33. Now, of course, once I get hold of these boards, I am going to be doing loads of testing in terms of performance, in terms of power efficiency, in terms of capabilities using these two different processors. Now, here's the interesting thing. How does it support, how does the RP2350 support two CPU architectures at the same time? Well, the RP2350 supports both ARM and RISC-V, and programs that are written using the SDK uh, don't contain any assembly code, so they're just compiled in C. So the same SDK compiles down uh, to both, depending on whether you say compile this for RISC-V or compile this for ARM. Now, the two processors uh, are referred to as Core 0 and Core 1. Now, each processor can be either an M33 core implementing ARM V8M, as I've said, or a Hazard 3 processor implementing the uh, RV32 uh, processor. So when the processor is reset, it looks at this arc cell register, and depending on the bits you've got set in there, it will either put a uh, boot up the M33 in there or the Hazard 3, depending on what you've selected. So what does that mean in more detail? Well, binaries that are compiled for the RP2350 have a marker that is recognized by the boot ROM on the boards so that it can know whether it's booting up an ARM or a RISC-V uh, binary. And when booting with Core 0 as an ARM uh, architecture mode, if it detects RISC-V binary, it will reboot it into RISC-V mode and vice versa. If it's already in RISC-V mode and then you boot up something, it will reboot it into ARM mode. So they've covered all of this with the bootloader that you get with boards like the Raspberry Pi Pico 2, and we'll talk more about boards uh, in a moment. 
But as a result, the USB bootloader that runs uh, on both ARM and RISC-5, so they've ported it to both, it doesn't matter what mode it's running in, when you copy something over, because remember with the, with the Raspberry Pi Pico, you can just copy over a file and it will just kind of go, oh great, new firmware, it can work out which CPU core it needs to boot into. Now there is quite an interesting section here in the data sheet that does say the Arc cell register has one bit for each processor. So it is possible to boot a RISC five and ARM mixed combination, either ARM and then RISC V or RISC V and then ARM. Now they're saying the practical uh, application of this are limited since it will require two different programs, one to run on, on each thing, but it can run in that way and they are able to speak to each other using the shared uh, mechanism that they have. So there's nothing to say that you can't have them running uh, side by side and they can still talk to each other using the different uh, layout that they've got built into that for those two processor cores to talk to each other but they do point out that hardware support debugging for a mixture of those two cores will be hard because the debugger was either expecting to speak to one or other. Basically, people don't ship this in any kind of computer. So this is new. Now, this will be exciting to play with as well because it will be quite interesting to see what can be achieved uh, in this, assuming that you're happy to, you know, do debugging maybe a bit more of the old-fashioned way with, you know, kind of print, print statements rather than using the built-in uh, hardware debugger. Now, there are boards that are coming out. So Raspberry Pi has announced the Pico 2. So that uses the RP2350. It can boot either as M33 or Hazard 3. You've got that 512K of SRAM, four megabytes of onboard flash. You can drag and drop new programs over just like you could with the Raspberry Pi Pico 1. The pinout is the same as the Raspberry Pi Pico 1. Uh, and there is a Pico 2W coming soon. So I've pre-ordered mine. They're not out yet when my one arrives. And it will probably be a bit later than other people because of where I live. It has to get shipped from uh, a bit further away from where I live. But once it does arrive... I will start playing with it. And I'm hoping also to be able to port uh, Piccolo OS directly over to the Pico 2. That shouldn't be an issue uh, because the Cortis M33 should basically work uh, in the same way. Uh, but I will, there will maybe some changes because of ARM v6 to ARM v8. I haven't looked into it yet. Will do, but we'll get Piccolo OS running on that as well. But that isn't the only board that's been announced. There are several others. I'm just going to show you two more. There are others that I've read briefly about as well. Uh, anybody that has a RP2350 based board that wants to get in contact with me, please do that and we'll, we'll see what we can do. But the Pi Moroni has the Pico Plus 2. That's already shipping and I've got an email notification saying my board has shipped. But again, it will probably take several days to get here because of where I live. So that's got the same... Uh, RP2350 on it. You've got 16 megabytes of external flash, 8 megabytes of pseudo static RAM, USB C connector. There is the quick connector so you can attach I squared C uh, things very quickly. There's a reset button and a boot button, and it's also got onboard. Uh, voltage regulators and it can be powered from anything from three to five volts so that's on its way to me so again i will love to do some testing on that and there is also the challenger plus remember i've reviewed the other challenger boards here on this channel again running that same rp2350 eight megabytes of pseudo static ram eight megabytes of flash but the big thing is it uses the th feather form factor from Adafruit and it includes an ESP32C6, which is also a RISC-V processor, for Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth. So one of these boards is on its way to me as well. Now these boards basically give you the same functionality as a Raspberry Pi 2W, but we get it today. So that's going to be really interesting to see that running uh, and up and running and you're able to do all kinds of stuff with that because it uses the co-processor there for the, uh, for the Wi-Fi and uh, Bluetooth. Again, USB-C connector, and it's also got the circuitry for a lithium polymer battery, including the charging circuit, and you can connect to it. So this is great for running in situations where you don't even want it connected into a wall socket. You can run it from a battery, and that all just works out of the box. Okay, so that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. 
as I said, lots of videos coming about RP2350 based boards from Raspberry Pi and from other people. When they come to me and the order they arrive in the post is basically the order that I will deal with them. So do stick around. If you want to catch those videos, make sure you subscribe to the, the channel and also hit that notification icon and you'll know when I drop a new video. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.